Hello and welcome to another edition of the Power BI Monthly Digest for the month of October now. My name is Devin Knight. And I'm Matt Peterson. And uh, we're excited to share with you, of course, our favorite things that have been released this month within the Power BI desktop. A lot of cool stuff, um, some kind of minor things, but also some things that are pretty impactful. So uh, interested to show you how these things have uh, changed what we do. So uh, start us off, Matt, here. What, what are the first things we're going to look at? Um, you're going to see a new interface right when you open up the Power BI desktop. Uh, normally, you're used to seeing that blank white canvas in front of you, but now you're actually going to have options right on the screen. Uh, and I really like it because I think for someone who's brand new to the program, it's kind of like a nice little welcome letter. So to speak. Oh, yeah. like, here's where you can go to get started with something. So it gives them a little bit more guidance on what to do when they, because so, a lot of people are brand new to Power BI, right? So yeah. they're opening it. They don't know where to get started. We spend even a lot of time in our classes, like pointing them in directions with things that are important to them. So yeah. built into the product now, there's a little bit more guidance. So. Yeah. And it even comes with a sample data set. If you want to load a sample data set right then and there, because, you know, sometimes it's like, well, what? I want to use the program, but I don't know what data to connect to or, right. you know, so they've got some sample data here for us now, too. Well, cool. Well, yeah. Give us a give us a look at it. Yeah. So this is what you see now when you come into the the home screen. Um, and so it, you get your most common options here. So import data from Excel, SQL Server. Uh, but right here, try a sample data set. So I'm going to click on try sample data set. And it is going to, um, you have options. You can actually take a tutorial online right away. So they kind of put those tutorial videos there. But we're going to go experiment on our own and we'll click on load the data. And this is just a very simple table. It's one table only that's going to uh, to pop in here. But here's another new feature once we pull this in. So I'm going to come over here. We'll pull in our financials. We'll go straight to loading it. We're going to skip the cleaning steps and all that. And once your data loads in here, this is another great thing that I think that I think is going to be good for, for new people to the, to the system. Let's look what it's telling you. It says, hey, you can start building visuals just select or drag from the fields pane. So if I just want to come over here and drag over my sales and you're, you're off and running to the races. So wow. it's a nice, nice little usability feature. Uh, they also have some of these um, kind of, they're called coach marks really. They have this in the service as well that we'll see in just a little bit. So let's go into another report. So if I'm going to come up here, I'm going to open up one of our other reports and this is going to be silly. Some people are going to be ecstatic about this next feature and other people will be like, what's the big deal? But watch what happens. I'm going to click this report. And right now when we're bringing up a new report, oh, it's coming up on the other screen, but we now have the option to close it right away. Uh, Cause I know I found myself every once in a while uh, opening a report and realizing, oh, that's not the one I want. And I have to wait and wait and wait for everything to get loaded. Yeah. Um, Especially but if it's a really big report. If it's a really too. big report. And so you're just waiting there and you're like, I wish I could just kill that action. Uh, but now you actually have that ability to, to kill the action there. That's nice. Yeah. So let's take a look here as we're uh, loading this report. It's the small things in life, Matt. It is the small <laughs> things in life. So the next thing that we want to talk about is the personalized visuals is now generally available. This used to be a preview feature, uh, but now it's generally available. And what that allows a user to do is to actually personalize a visual after you publish it out. Another thing that they've changed with this is if we go to a whole page in the past, if you have a visual selected, you would then come over to the formatting section. And then it's all it's already it's tucked down here under visual headers. But this is where you would go to do your individual control of contr uh, personalizing an actual visual. And so you could turn things from on to off and you could do this for each and every little individual. However, let's say you had a whole page and you wanted to turn it off for that page, but leave it on for others. Oh, yeah. Instead of going to each separate one, all we do now is go into our page settings and personalize visuals from on oh, to off. Oh, that's nice. So I'm going to keep them on for right now. And so, again, you set up personalizing visuals in the desktop, but where you actually see your where you can do this is when you publish this out to the service. Okay. So let's publish this out real quick. Uh, we're going to save these changes. And uh, also, if you didn't watch last uh, month's digest, one of the nice things, again, the simple things in life, is you can now search for your workspaces. Yeah. So we have one called monthly, so we don't have to scroll through everything. Right. And I'm going to take this out here. We're going to publish this out. And so again, I think this is a, a nice usability feature. Uh, you don't have to have it turned on anymore. Uh, it is generally available. And once this gets published out to the service, we're actually going to be able to take any of these visuals and personalize it, which you could have done prior to this release with the preview feature. But they've actually added some updates to that as well of how you can actually do the personalizing. So let's take a look at this report. 
And as this comes up, we have now more drag and drop capability that was not supported uh, beforehand. And so as we see this, this is your personalized visuals icon. So that means I'm allowed to personalize it. So I'm going to select this one right here. And now I can actually do dragging and dropping. So if I wanted to add gender um, or if I wanted to add the sales territory country uh, to the legend or actually gender to the, the axis here, I'm going to drag and drop that. There we go. So now we have this drag and drop capability and then I can move sales territory country uh, over into the legend. So that's one new feature is the drag and drop capability. Uh, the other thing that you can now do is you can change default summarizations. So for the values, um, if we click over here, oh, we can nice. now, just like we do in the desktop, we can show how is something going to be shown in a visual. You didn't have this capability um, prior to, to this month, but now in the service, you actually do have that capability. Very nice. All right. And then the last just thing that you can do is you can actually set up personalizing visuals in the service itself. So if you made some mistakes and you don't want to go back and republish the report, if you click on edit, you're then going to get those same features where you can click on a visual, go to the formatting, go to visual headers, go all the way down to the bottom, and then you can click on uh, personalized visual all the way down to the bottom from on to off. So now you have that capability to be able to actually set it up in the uh, space as well. That's awesome. Yeah, so that's a pretty cool, a lot, a lot of little cool features there that uh, some of them have gone down generally available, some of them have gone generally available and they've added a few things. So a lot of neat little things there with the uh, personalized visuals thing. Um, the next one is also one that is uh, kind of changing over time. We've you, you actually showed this feature a couple months ago, I think. I think I've shown point. it two months now because yeah. each month they put out a new update with it, but it's your lasso effect on your visuals. Yeah. Um, and last month it was generally available for just almost all charts, but the one that didn't get any love was the tree map. Yeah. So now it's actually available on the tree map. Now this is a preview feature though, so make sure to go into your preview features and you turn on uh, the lasso effect. Okay. Let's so let's take, take a, look. a look. So we'll go back to our report here. And so I'm always, been, you have to hit the, the one thing that's a gotcha is you have to use the control uh, key when you're here in the desktop to get this feature. So if you hit control and then you just expand out what you want. So now it just does selecting a bachelor's, partial college and graduate degree. Again, could we have just done control select and actually selected them? Yes, but as Devin says, it is the little things in life that sometimes <laughs> make things a little bit uh, nicer there. Absolutely. Uh, so <laughs> Uh, also, another little. There's, this is all about little things here. It little is all things, about little things. Little things, but nice. Uh, the next one that we're going to look at is also kind of a little thing that has to do with Q and A, right? So uh, Q and A, we've over the months uh, and really years had a lot of Q and A changes and enhancements, but the one this month has to do with actually exporting data out of Q and A, right? Yeah. And prior to this, you couldn't export the data from the Q and A visual. So now they've added that, just like in all your other visuals, where you hit the ellipses and got the export data option. They've added it on to the Q&A visual. So again, another small thing. So let's just take a look yeah. at it, just in case we, no one's familiar with that. So let's just go into a Q&A visual here. Um, you know what? I'll just go with one of their ones that they have, top titles by profit margin. Let's click on it. And let's see if we got any results. Uh, so we have some results here. Uh, so now what we can do is we can actually export this data. So let's turn this into uh, a standard visual. And now, Coming right on over, I can now export the data. Very cool. So again, small feature, but uh, a goodie, so to yeah. speak. Uh, the next one is more of just an enhancement to some existing DAX functions, I think. So we, you, you talk, there's uh, a lot of like conditional functions like switch and if and things like that. And so tell, tell us a little bit about changes they've made there behind the scenes. Yeah, so with ifs and switch, you can get very complicated. It's like if I have 10 different outcomes that I'm looking to calculate out, that's a lot of, of measurements to run through, a lot of code to run through. <laughs> Um, but they've done some back end technical side things that they're making these switch and nested if functions work quicker. So you're going to see uh, quicker query results. Your visuals are going to render much more quickly as well. Uh, so nothing that we can really showcase, but it's just if you are a big fan or someone who uses nested ifs a lot in the switch function, know that with this release, you will start seeing an improved performance with it. Good deal. All right, then we have uh, two more small features. Really, uh, again, small, compact little features here, but good ones this month. Uh, the next one to do with direct query. So if you're a customer that's using direct query for a data, data, a data source, <laughs> a data source, 
then you now have the ability to actually pass in dynamic parameters into them and make those parameters accessible for, from your end users, for your end users themselves. So your end users can select like a parameter value and based on the parameter value they select, I should say not parameter value, a slicer value. And based on the slicer value they select, it will pass in those values back to the data source and do some filtering to kind of optimize performance for those uh, direct query queries that are running back to your data source. So. Uh yeah. So you're like saying, so instead of referencing the whole direct query, we have a filter, and then what we select on that filter, it actually doesn't, it technically filters the visuals, but it's going to filter the data source first so right. that it doesn't have to look at 100 million rows, maybe it's only looking at 1 million rows. Exactly. So okay. many, many people are probably familiar with parameters that exist in the query editor, Power Query editor. That capability now you can tap into a slicer. And so whatever the value you have in a slicer, it can take that value. Let's say, for example, you want to have a start date and end date range. You can take the value that you have in a slicer and pass it back to the query so that it automatically runs a smaller query back to your data source. It's pretty slick. Yeah. So let's take a look at this one real quick. So for this one, I have a direct query data source. And Matt and I are shifting around here a little bit. Uh, but I have a direct query data source that's already available to us right here from a previous uh, uh, digest. And really, the couple things that I want to show you here, I'm going to kind of give you a brief overview of some things that you've likely know about already, which is parameters. You can find the parameters by going underneath the Power Query Editor, so transform data here. And whenever that launches, let me bring it over to the right screen here. Come on, work with me here. There we go. It's a little delayed. But whenever it launches, you can create parameters up in the Manage Parameter section here. You can see I already have one called Start Date. And you can create new parameters here as well. But then you can take those parameter values and you can actually bind them to columns in your data model. So after you create the parameter here, which is simple as just creating new parameter and then defining what makes up that parameter here. In my case, you can see I already had one. But once you have that parameter, you can then go bind it into your uh, uh, columns that you have. And so uh, you, you can also, by the way, you should uh, potentially change inside the Power Query Editor um, how it's being filtered. So you may be familiar already that you can change either through the M Query and the Advanced Editor, where you can tell it that that new parameter is bound to a certain table within inside your model, or um, you can also just kind of do kind of filters and bind it to a filter there as well. But once you're in the model, You'll go to your model view here, and you'll select the table that you have, the column that you want to base the, the bound uh, parameter to. So if it's this date column that I have here, I can select that date column. And then down in the advanced section down here, if I expand that, you'll see that you have a sec you have a bunch of things that you can do in here now, but one of them is bind to parameter. And what bind to parameter will allow you to do is to bind it to your parameter so that way whenever you use this value, on your uh, data source, or I should say in a slicer, it will actually pass the value from your slicer back into the query and query smaller amounts of data. So a really cool new feature that allows you to kind of take things and optimize them for direct query uh, purposes here. Okay. All right, cool. So I think we have one more feature to highlight, which is around Excel, Excel connections even. It's something that you haven't really seen a whole lot of changes with mm -hmm. over uh, uh, very much time at all. There really hasn't been many changes with this particular connector, but now they've made it so whenever you're connecting to an Excel sheet, what, what happens? So now it will actually look for tables. And my, what I mean by look for tables, these are going to be ones that actually aren't tables. But it's going to look and go, you know what? <coughs> this section of cells looks like it should be a table. Yeah. And I'm just going to suggest it to you. Do you have to use it? No. But what's nice is could we obviously go back into Excel and format it as tables on our own? Sure. But, you know, the little things in life. The little Devin. things. It's the little, the little things. things. In life. So it'll. So what you're saying is it will kind of. And I'll kind of transition here as we do that. It it will find a region uh, uh, of cells on and, your sheet on your on your spreadsheet and then go. Hey, I think this little region right here should be a table. Gotcha. Okay. All right. So let's give it a try. So if we go up to the Excel connector, mm -hmm. and let's say that we want to use this data set called uh, screening data, some healthcare data here, and after a few moments. Ah, see right down here, suggested yeah. table. So let's look at sheet one first. Let's get a preview of that. Okay, so let's take a look at sheet one. So sheet one, ooh. See, we've got all these. So we have these three rows at the top that just tells us when the file was created, what program, et cetera, it's coming from. But now it's going, you know what? I think that little region should be a table. So let's take a look at what they uh, came up with. 
Okay, so it looks like it detected that top area, kind of the file information as a region and really kind of detected it potentially as a table, a suggested table. And then if we go to sheet one, three, oh, look yeah. at that. So that just stops us from having to go into the query editor, remove rows, get rid of nulls, et cetera. It just, you know, kind of makes it, again, quicker. Yeah. Now, one thing that's worth noting here is Matt and I did notice that uh, when we had a, a larger file, a larger Excel file, that it took a while and it actually didn't work. It kind of hung up. You kept yeah. seeing the, so if you see the, the scrolling yellow dots uh, and you see them for more than 30 seconds, I would give up at this point. So this yeah. is... Um, just something that they're going to, I'm sure, going to be improving upon. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, just keep that in mind is if you see that it's your file is not detecting regions of tables automatically, it might be the number of rows that you have. That was kind of an experience we had when we brought a rather large file in as it struggled a little bit. But for smaller files, uh, and that's all obviously a relative term, I think the one <laughs> that we use has uh, 60 or 90,000 rows I think in it. So. Um, but uh, if you have smaller files that are probably a few thousand rows, it'll, it'll be able to detect the different regions that you have on each spreadsheet. So pretty cool little feature, I think. Mm -hmm. Well, that's really it for t this one. I think there was some new data connectors that came out as well. There was a, sp uh, a, a new CRM connector to one called eWay. There was another one as well that's worth looking at if, uh, called Spigot. Or Spigot. <laughs> or Spigot, wow. which I mean, yeah, we don't, we're not familiar with those particular <laughs> data sources, but they're ones that you're working with. That's obviously a big uh, a benefit to you. But uh, as always, we enjoy sharing with you uh, some of the new features that come out with Power BI uh, this month in October. Uh, we look forward to sharing with you uh, new features that come out next month as well. Share with us below what are some of the things that you liked out of this month's update. We'd be curious to hear what were some of the things that were most exciting to you as well. Uh, but for uh, myself, my name is Devin Knight. And I'm Matt Peterson. I look forward to chatting with you next time. Thanks. Thank you.